This is our 10 minute trainer on anti-money laundering. We need to focus on these rules because even though the law went into effect in 2012, we found over and over again companies saying, I didn't know that this applied to us. So part of the problem lies in the fact that anti-money laundering, when you say it like that, you think cash transactions, and we're all familiar with money laundering with respect to various cash-based activities, trying to legitimize money. However, what do we do in the lending industry that makes us need to participate in the anti-money laundering activity? Simply because we're not taking currency transactions does not mean that the rule doesn't apply to us. It does. The regulation went into effect in 2012. What we found is that many companies align their annual audit process with these effective dates in order to achieve compliance. It's not necessary to have an audit or an exam or a review on the effective date of the regulation. However, it's a good tickler. The BSA AML regulations applicable to mortgage lenders deal with the detection and reporting a fraud among many mortgage related scams FinCEN has identified are false statements, straw buyers, fraudulent, flipping, flopping, identity theft. These are all common mortgage scams. You might think, what do these have to do with money laundering? All fraud at some level, however, involves the filtering of ill-gotten gains through the banking systems. Otherwise, criminals can't use the money. The most common mistake people make with respect to AML is the identification of the $10,000 currency threshold as the level at which we have to report fraud. Means a lot of people are looking for $9,999 transactions who are trying to escape or fly below the radar of a regulator. The reality is, is that our threshold for reporting is $5,000. So an aggregate of 5,000 or more is reportable. So if you've got somebody who's got undisclosed cash coming in and it amounts to $5,000, not a single instance, that is reportable. So a single instance of a red flag is not by itself an indication of suspicious or illegal activity. You have to look at the whole picture to see if there's an issue. That's why we give you the red flags checklist where there is an array of possible overlays that can help you determine if something is a pattern that needs to be further investigated. If you take one thing from this class is that if you find something, you need to look a little further. Just because a borrower qualifies or the assets have been seasoned for a sufficient amount of time does not mean that the transaction is exempt from SAR reporting. Assets represent one area where you need to evaluate suspicious activity. Business cash flow is a second area. Look at the business. Do the transactions make sense? Is there a business solely for the purpose of putting money into the financial system? Or does the business actually have transactions representing commerce? Your red flags guide, checklist, and other materials will help you identify if there's something suspicious in a loan file. Again, the bottom line is, just because the loan is eligible doesn't mean that it's not suspicious activity that needs to be reported. On the other hand, just because you can't do the loan doesn't mean that's where your responsibility ends. You need to be able to report suspicious activity. Dealing with anti-money laundering, remember that we already cover many of the requirements in our basic loan process. For instance, we check photo ID as part of Patriot Act compliance. That's part of the same rule. We don't handle cash transactions. Branches have their own procedures for currency. We have to look further into the loan file. For us in the mortgage industry, we already have many fraud guards in place. Anti-money laundering reviews are effectively fraud detection reviews. We can extend this fraud detection from our mortgage lending into our money laundering review because the red flags checklists are good foundations for further investigation. However, we need to do a better job when we find something suspicious. We can't just deny a loan because we can't source the funds. We can't deny a loan just because there are unresolved issues in a file. These are red flags. We need to elevate these to a supervisor and determine whether or not we need to do additional further reporting. When we look to identify money laundering in a loan file, we can start with the assets first because that's an easy target. Identify potential problems by looking for unusual deposits, unverified transaction, and anything else that looks out of the ordinary. What often gets lost in the translation about anti-money laundering is the fact that we have to expand our scope beyond whether or not the customer has sufficient funds for closing. When there are sufficient funds, we also need to ensure that we're not just excluding excess funds that may not be needed for closing because those could potentially represent red flags that we must report. One of the most common misunderstandings about the Know Your Customer rules is that we think that we're already doing it. 
with our Patriot Act identification of individual consumers. Know your customer, KYC, deals with a business entity. You must identify the individuals who own business accounts in order to identify whether those individuals are subject to sanctions through OFAC or other government agencies. Further, when looking at businesses, we have to make sure that the business itself makes sense. Does the account or business exist simply as a mechanism to collect cash and distribute to the owner? You can tell this by looking at the transactions in a business account. Are there day-to-day -day expenses and normal transactions, or are they just inbound transactions for the sake of legitimizing the cash? OFAC stands for the Office of Foreign Assets Control. We check for OFAC clearance on our credit reports and in our fraud guards. Once again, if you are dealing with a fictitious entity or a non-natural person, you must determine the beneficial ownership of that organization to accurately or completely clear OFAC. Currency transaction reporting, or CTRs, are at the crux of the confusion over SAR reporting in the mortgage industry. We think we don't conduct currency transactions, so we don't need to do anything with SARS. We know about the $10,000 threshold, but this has nothing to do with SAR reporting in the review of our loan files. Sure, you want to look to find currency transactions which are suspiciously under the $10,000 threshold, and if you see this, you're looking at a tactic known as smurfing. For the mortgage industry, our threshold for SAR reporting is $5,000, or a number of suspicious transactions which, when aggregated, exceed $5,000. As an example, if you had someone with unsourced cash deposits of $1,000, $2,000, and $2,500, this would aggregate to $5,500, which is over the threshold for SAR reporting. We use our red flags checklists to look for fraud generally. However, you can extend that red flags review for anti-money laundering. It's essentially red flags plus. Do you have a suspicious red flag? Add to that, it's in an area of geographic high intensity money laundering, or add to that, it's a business type with a high propensity for money laundering, and you've got a suspicious activity potential. When you detect this type of red flag from your standard fraud detection, go to your business specific red flags checklist for further due diligence. In this way, you start with your generic fraud red flags, and if you find a question, elevate it based on geography and business type. If you generally do business in an area of high frequency money laundering activity, you don't have to default to, is this property or transaction in an area of high frequency? But for many people who operate on the edges of these areas, it's important to add this extra step in your due diligence. If you look at this map here, you'll see that the areas that represent the usual suspects, South Florida, the border states, New York State and the New York metro areas, Chicago land, Northern California. Once you've cleared the geographical review, the next level of review determines whether or not you're dealing with a business with a high propensity for laundering money. Most important to us, the real estate business is frequently used to launder money. For instance, you may purchase a property with a little value, spend a large amount of illegal cash renovating and improving it, and then utilize the financial system to take cash out. Property management firms also collect monthly deposits for rent and must be evaluated particularly if the rents are in cash. Many medical businesses such as clinics utilize cash payments to launder money. Any cash-based business such as a restaurant, check cashing business, and others clearly are suspect. One red flag by itself does not necessarily represent a SAR, a reportable event. However, if you see more than one red flag within a loan file, you likely need to report it. If you find something you think is a red flag, take the suspicious item and with that, go to your supervisor to discuss whether the incident needs to be reported. If you don't have a supervisor, utilize the red flag elevation checklist and workflow to determine whether or not you should report the incident as a suspicious activity via the FinCEN portal. If you have filed a suspicious activity report, do not alert the customer. This may cause them to destroy evidence, and it may implicate you and hold you accountable as part of a conspiracy. Action may not immediately be taken on a suspicious activity report, if at all. However, rest assured you have done your part to identify potential money laundering. It may seem like a small action, but you could prevent a terrorist act and save someone's life. You and your supervisor will look at the exhibits and determine whether or not it meets the criteria for SAR reporting. If it does not, simply document the file with the checklists and your conversation with your supervisor and proceed as normal. QC, Quality Control, may flag the file 
for further review. However, if the suspicion cannot be cleared and the amount of the transactions aggregate to over $5,000, nothing is lost by preparing a suspicious activity report and filing it. If the item is more than just a suspicious activity, such as an actual fraud or a conspiracy to commit fraud, you must report it to law enforcement as well. Your supervisor or compliance officer should be able to assist you in this matter.